Hey, it's Nancy, and today I am not going to explain math. There's something else important I wanna to talk to you about. A lot of people recently have been asking me if I've ever failed a test. It's usually because the person has just failed a test, they just found out, and they don't know if other people they know have gone through this, and they're looking for any kind of glimmer of hope. Yeah, I have failed a test, and I'm here to tell you about it. <laughs> yeah, as a high school Nancy, very studious, very, Book smart, had never failed tests before. And then that economics test showed up. That score, the number. The number itself is shocking when you get the test back. So I look at the score and it's 36. And I was hoping for a minute that that was out of 50, but it's 36%. And I know what percent means. That is definitely out of 100. And then your brain goes to, okay, so if this is my grade out of 100, how does this affect my next test? What do I need to do on my next test or final in order to counteract this? And it's like a numbers averaging thing you're figuring out. Is this hopeless? Should I drop this class right now if I can? You're gonna be doing some math to figure out if there's hope for you to pass now. It's kind of ironic doing math to figure out if you can pass your math class. I studied, I thought I studied enough. I didn't think I failed. I felt like I took the test and I had used good judgment and logic and answering the questions, but apparently I was way off. I didn't realize that I actually needed like a better understanding of the, I needed a, I needed a more, um, I should have studied harder those concepts. Definitely there's that, that element of embarrassment, but mostly it's, should I not be in this class? Am I not smart enough for this class? Yeah, that is, that's real. Yeah, once you get past the embarrassment, then there's a, a bit of anger, definitely at yourself, but at least for me also at the teacher because these test questions were so different from the homework practice and from what she taught in the class. And it just feels a little bit like betrayal, like you're blindsided by these test questions. Not quite fair. And then when the anger goes away, you're just left feeling kind of stuck. Maybe you don't know how to study differently or you have a job or a part-time job that just takes a lot of time and you're just overloaded with life stuff or family stuff or you've got a bunch of other classes that are demanding and like, how are you supposed to do things differently to, to not let this happen again? And quite honestly, I was a senior, feeling some senioritis. So maybe a little demotivated, <laughs> that's honest. But like, what am I working for? <laughs> Why do I need to get an A in this class? No, wait, can they take away your college acceptance if you don't pass that class? Yeah, that's a, that's a scary thought. <laughs> the important thing to remember is that one, you're not alone. It's not just you. There are a lot of people who just failed, who are worried about failing. There's probably people in your own class who failed the same test. You're not alone. And number two, it, this doesn't mean that you failed forever. That was just that moment in time. It, this does not mean that you're not capable of doing that math, that you don't have the ability to do it, no. It was just at that particular checkpoint in time, your progress was there. Case in point, I did not fail the next test. I barely passed it. So I hope me revealing how terrible I was at economics helped you feel better about your math test. Certainly not my finest time to shine that economics class. And hey, if you're having some trouble with math, I know a certain someone who has a bunch of great tutorials on math is making those math videos now. Currently on a lot of topics, I'm talking about myself. I make a lot of math videos. So subscribe and I'll help you out with math.